Stay up on the latest this hurricane season. Please subscribe for future updates. Good Tuesday morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here with your Tropical Storm Debbie update, which I'm kind of slugging. Get ready for Debbie take two as the system's getting ready to move back into the Atlantic. It may re-intensify a little bit and then make another landfall along the South Carolina coast a little bit later this week. So we're not done with this system yet. And boy, is this thing going to meander, meander here for a little while. I guess that's the correct word there. Let's take a look at the latest radar here. And in all seriousness, folks, we've had a few deaths with this system already in Florida and Georgia. And we're not through yet. Keep in mind that we lose more people to flooding than any other event. And the cataclysmic flooding is going to continue here with these very heavy rains. All those feeder bands here coming in off the Atlantic abundant moisture We'll continue to add up the totals. Now, the rainfall totals between Charleston and Savannah have been quite impressive. Some of those storm totals have been approaching 15 inches like we saw down into Florida as this rain is wrapping back around the system. In fact, I'll go ahead and show, show you some of these rainfall totals. I'll go ahead and switch over here to the storm total map here uh, real quick and kind of show you some of these. I'll kind of zoom in and kind of, see, kind of see some of these higher areas in here. And I'll even highlight some of these. As you can see, they're just south of Hollywood. Boy, we're talking uh, 13 uh, getting up getting close to 14 inches of rain. So anywhere there in that purple that you're seeing in here between uh, Charleston and heading down toward Hilton Head, this purple area, we're talking 10 plus inches of rain even here across uh, southeast Georgia as well. And again, all that moisture is coming in. And we're going to continue to add to these totals. So again, the flooding uh, will be quite extensive and we could be challenging the all time rainfall totals potentially with the system before it's all said and done for a few of these states. So uh, definitely something to be very concerned with as the system's gonna meander here for a couple of days. Now looking at the latest satellite imagery as we're starting to get the sun up here as the center of circulation still sitting over land a little bit, but it's gonna forecast to move on out to sea and kind of do a little loop here. It's gonna kind of go out for a little bit and then it kind of turn back toward the north. We're waiting on a trough up here and across the northern tier states is gonna pick this system up as we head toward Friday and it's gonna Go ahead and scoot this thing right on out to sea, but it's going to take it a couple of days. I mean, look at the plot. Look how clustered this thing is. It's going to move on out to sea. As it does so, it's going to re-intensify. It could get winds back up to about 60 miles per hour. Moves up toward the north as we go into early Friday morning, and then boom, it gets taken off as this trough picks it up and accelerates it back on out to sea. It may become a tropical storm again there off the coast of uh, Maine. But uh, in the meantime, it's going to meander here for you know, another 48 hours or so. And as a result of this, we got the tropical storm force winds are going to continue to coast. And we're talking about an extensive amount of rainfall that's going to fall in this area, uh, to say the least. Here are the continued totals here, uh, updated here from the National Hurricane Center. Again, you see the red areas here. We're talking uh, anywhere from 12 to 16 inches in here. And even this bullseye here, 16 to 20, right along the North Carolina and South Carolina border. So uh, again, big time flooding here. And still got the rains wrapping around, even still getting upwards another eight inches there, potentially into Savannah as well. So uh, get ready as this uh, very heavy rain event is going to last for a couple more days before we get this thing to kick on out of here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest North American model here for this morning. Again, this lining up pretty good. You've seen the rains here uh, wrapping around into Georgia and across the Carolina. South Carolina appears to be ground zero for this in parts of North Carolina as well. I'll go ahead and kick this off into interactive mode. We'll go ahead and step you through this forecast period. Watch that time code there at the upper right-hand part of your screen as I go ahead and take this thing forward, as you can see here, throughout the day on Tuesday. Not really changing its position all that much, that's for sure. Even going into Wednesday as the rain continues to wrap around and kind of seeing the rain falling on the same ground over and over again uh, throughout the day on Wednesday. But as we go into Thursday, that's when things begin to change. It starts to slowly move off, heading off toward the north. And eventually, we'll start to pull on out. And as it does so, we'll say goodbye to that rain as we head into Friday morning. Let's take a look at the precipitation totals on this system. As you can see, this is going to be quite extensive here. Uh, seeing a couple of 10 inches in here, 10 and a half inches. And then look up here. Here's one showing up here close to 14 to 20 inches of rain right along the North Carolina coast. So some flooding rains here from South Carolina, even going up into Virginia, nine inches of rain up into ports of Virginia as well. So this entire coastal area is gonna be inundated with flooding conditions and flash flood watches are obviously up for this area uh, because of the th severe weather and the, uh, the storm threat that's moving through there uh, at this time. Now, as we take a look at the severe 
home of this. We do have tornado watches up here from North Carolina on down into South Carolina. It's a marginal risk. But obviously, when you're dealing with a landfalling tropical system, some of those spiral bands, as they kind of come on shore, you may get a few water spouts, a few uh, isolated weak tornadoes that kind of move in across this area. We've had several of them yesterday. So obviously, Florida as well as Georgia, when this thing made landfall early yesterday morning. And now that'll continue throughout the day. So here are the flood watches extending from North Florida all the way up into North Carolina. Those will be extended up, obviously, into Virginia as the storm system begins to move up toward the north. This area there, you kind of see that uh, burgundy color. That's your tropical storm force winds warnings out. And then the yellow, which extends uh, really from North Carolina back down to South Carolina, is your tornado watches that are out right now for those weak ice head tornadoes that could spin up there along the coast especially. So it's going to be a busy next couple of days here watching this system. In fact, I'm probably looking at uh, possibly doing uh, another live coverage as we get ready for another landfall on the system as we go into Wednesday uh, as this thing moves in along the Carolina coast before it finally kicks off and as we go into um, into later this week. So be some good news to get this system on out here, but the flooding potential here uh, is going to be quite traumatic. We've seen a lot of flooding across Florida across Georgia. We've had, I think, upwards of five deaths so far with the system. So even though this was only a Category 1 hurricane, boy, that can really does some, do some damage, uh, especially if it lingers for any length of time. And those flooding rains are just a torrential headache and a real pain. So let's pray for the folks in the path of the storm. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.